Maybe you've heard about mirroring for Azure SQL Database, Azure SQL Managed Instance, and SQL Server. But did you know that there's a thing called open mirroring so you can mirror whatever else you want? Learn all about it this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Maraki, who's a product manager on the data integration team. Uh, why don't you kick us off by telling us a little bit about what you do? Well, good morning. Thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Uh, as you said, I'm, my name is Maraki. I'm one of the product leads on the data integration team. Joined Microsoft roughly nine months ago um, from a couple of uh, data companies that some of you might know. Um, and I spend a lot of my time thinking about mirroring and how to help customers get started really easily with um, their data in Microsoft Fabric um, and, you know, uh, more specifically focused on our open mirroring APIs and, and ex making that platform more extensible and accessible to a lot of our customers. Um, so super excited to join you today. Awesome. Well, it's great to have you on the show. And we've talked about mirroring a decent bit on the show uh, for folks joining us in uh, for a repeated time, um, but we've never talked about open mirroring. So I'm really looking forward to learning more about it. I don't know anything about it myself. Uh, so with that being said, let's let's get right into it. But maybe if you could share a little background on you know what mirroring is to begin with. Yes. So I mean, I always like to start with a question, right? Like, and, and that question is, what is the most difficult part of getting started with any kind of data platform? And the most common answer that we get from our customers is that the most difficult thing is getting data into that platform. So whether you are using Fabric or any data platform out there for your AI or BI use cases, you have to first actually get the data in. And the landscape that our customers often deal with looks a little bit like this. Their data is spread across wow. multiple <laughs> platforms. <laughs> yes, this, is, this, should, this, this, this one should be very familiar to everybody that, they, that, that sees it, right? multiple platforms, applications, data formats, right? Like data is everywhere. Um, and so our customers need to find a way to make sense of that data. Um, and that's where mirroring um, and more specifically one lake as sort of that foundational layer, that SaaS data lake as a service, um, uh, which is essentially like the OneDrive uh, equivalent, uh, but for your data comes into play. Nice. And so what mirroring does is it creates a replica. So a one-to-one -one replica of your data. Um, and as your data changes, um, we make updates, right? Whether it's changes to uh, the data, like row by row data, whether it's changes to the schema, uh, we keep your data up to date. Um, it's completely free of uh, uh, replication as well as um, uh, storage up to a certain limit. So if a customer has an F64, they, they get 64 terabytes of uh, free storage in one lake. Wow. But it's one of the easiest ways to get data in um, and uh, today, right, uh, you know, as you know, Anna, we support um, all of these different uh, uh, open mirroring or mirroring sources uh, for customers to leverage and get started with. Um, but a lot of our customers tell us, hey, this is really great, but my data is actually spread across legacy systems that <laughs> um, are no longer managed, right? Like, so for example, in your world, Anna, SQL Server 2008, like how do I get data out right. of SQL Server 2008? Uh, or mainframes or um, bespoke data solutions that are out there, right? Um, things that are built on uh, like ERP systems that are built off of AWS, for example, um, and customers need to find ways to easily extract that data. And we know that we can't really uh, scale to this particular image uh, as a company. And so what, our goal is to help empower customers and um, really meet them where they are. Love that. So what, what can they do? <laughs> yes. So that's where open mirroring comes into play. So this diagram that you saw here, data spread all over the place, multiple platforms, multiple formats. Um, and what open mirroring does is it makes it simpler by um, empowering customers, empowering partners to build their own open mirroring source. So all you need to do is convert the data from the source into a Parquet or CSV format and land it into the One Lake landing zone along with any additional updates that are taking place to the data. Um, and we automatically uh, do the conversion to Delta Parquet, get it ready and completely optimized for use for all of your AI and BI use cases inside Fabric um, and allow you to um, uh, keep that updated. So we've had customers start to leverage it on an hourly basis and you know, combine um, different systems 
um, that they haven't really been able to combine before uh, for uh, their business use cases. So it's a really powerful tool that uh, makes the replication technology that customers know and love for sources like Azure SQL DB and SQL MI and um, Snowflake and others um, and empowers them to actually go out and build their own open mirroring uh, integrations themselves. Wow, this is great. And I mean, this uh, demo is a, a little bit quick, but as it's gone through, I, I've seen it does look really easy, right? Uh, and, and I also love this point you you said on the side about via API. So I could put some own, my own automation in to you know, push it up every hour, or is that kind of how it works? Yeah, so let's kind of walk through the actual demo, right? So let me uh, back up and start it over. So you create your open mirroring source, and you can actually either drag and drop your Parquet and CSVs, like the demo will show in a minute here. Um, and once you do that, it does everything, converts it to Delta um, and uh, makes it ready for use in uh, Fabric. But you can also leverage APIs by first specifying the landing zone, which uh, we copied from that mirroring source, running the code itself. Um, and then once the authentication completes, you start to see the data flow in. So we had originally two tables, now we have three. You can actually go ahead and start querying that data as well. Um, so, um, and I have other demos as well that kind of walk through the, the details of actually how to leverage that API um, if you're interested. Awesome, that's great. I mean, I think, you know, being the kind of lead for open mirroring, yeah, exactly. Like, wh what else do people need to know? Yes. So like everything else that you can do in mirroring today, um, what mirror, open mirroring does is it auto-generates SQL endpoint for you. Um, it supports uh, change data files. So if you have updates, if you have deletes, if you have data that's being upserted or inserted, um, we have support for those capabilities so that we can keep your data up to date um, in one lake as long as you're able to push those change files up to us via the APIs. Um, and then like every other replica uh, in Microsoft Fabric, whether you're using Azure SQL DB or SQL MI, like I mentioned, or Oracle at some point in the future, Google BigQuery in the future, any open mirroring source that you build as a customer or leverage uh, from a partner product, um, you can actually, it's, it's free, right? So storage in one lake is free um, up to a certain limit. So all of the guarantees that come with um, leveraging mirroring, um, uh, the mirroring capabilities that are built into Fabric are also available to you for the capabilities that you're building um, to better meet your needs, right? Uh, for some of those more bespoke solutions and bespoke data sources that are out there. Awesome. I love it. And really at the end of the day, like mirroring is just the first step, right? And yes. then now you're in, you're in fabric. You can do everything, uh, everything there is to do in fabric, right? Precisely. Yeah. So the idea is let's make the, the, the journey of getting the data in as simple as possible so that you're actually more focused on the really important tasks, building out those data agents, um, building out those reports, um, doing that deeper data science and notebooks, right? It empowers you uh, to spend a lot of your time focused on uh, the business critical uh, tasks that are actually going to derive important insights for your organization. Um, and, and that's the reason why we've made mirroring as simple as it can be, right? No ETL, no need to worry about schedules. Um, you can leverage mirroring uh, for the sources that we support or open mirroring and actually uh, programmatically start pushing data up uh, on an hourly cadence, on a you know weekly cadence, whatever, whatever cadence makes sense for you. And we have lots of really amazing um, support for SDKs and samples and things like that that are out available uh, uh, on the web that customers can use to get started today. Awesome. Great. Well, hey, I've learned so much uh, about open mirroring, and I think it's really useful. It's going to be really easy to kind of kick off. Uh, as we close out, any final tips or tricks or words of advice for folks who might be just getting started? Yeah. So a couple things. Um, we have a really vast ecosystem of partners that have actually built out uh, open mirroring integrations natively within their products. So Strim, Oracle, um, Clued In, uh, SMP, uh, Simple Mint Dab, et cetera, um, that customers can leverage today if they're on those platforms and, and leveraging um, uh, some of the, the, the partner products out there. The other thing that I will say, right, is um, we're increasing our partner ecosystem. So if you're a partner out there and you're listening to this, we'd love to have you join our ecosystem uh, of partners and be one of those logos on that list. Um, and the thing for customers and partners to kind of realize is that 
the journey that data needs to go on to be converted into a Delta Parquet format and optimized for one lake is very daunting. <laughs> and that's part of the reason why we take on that task for you. You just simply push your Parquet and CSV files and we do the work to convert to Delta um, uh, using the open mirroring platform. So it's really powerful and it simplifies uh, a lot of the tasks necessary, a lot of the underlying work necessary um, to get started and get your data optimized uh, for all of your fabric workloads. Um, and the lastly, right, like I'll just emphasize free mirroring storage for replicas. So if you're on, for example, uh, an F64, you get 64 terabytes of free storage. And then um, the compute required to actually replicate your data is also free. Um, so there's really no reason why you shouldn't be using this. It's super easy to get started. And uh, we'd love to, um, to have you join our community of developers, um, as well as our community of partners um, that are uh, supporting open mirroring um, and helping us grow uh, the number of sources that are supported um, through that extensibility platform. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks again for coming on the show. I learned a lot. I'm sure our viewers learned a lot about open mirroring. You know, mirroring for SQL Server, especially recently, has been a huge hit and a huge ask. Uh, and now I know they're just going to think of other things that they want to mirror and get into one lake when they see the, the benefit and the value. So thanks so much uh, to our viewers. If you like this episode, go ahead and give it a like, leave us a comment, and let us know what you think. We'll put some links in the description below for you to learn more. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. <laughs> <laughs>